Uh, how many of you know Lisa's work from her books? How many of you watch BoJack? How many of you listen to Baby Geniuses? Okay, good. Those of y'all who don't, get on that. It's great. Okay, so today what we're gonna do is uh, I'm going to show a bunch of random images from Lisa's career. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna ask you, Lisa, just to talk about not where you got your ideas, but um, what you were thinking <laughs> as, as you came up with some of these Wait, images. Wait, how are those different? Yeah, well that's it. That's, I, I'd like to maybe focus on uh, the development of your voice. Your stuff does not look or feel like anybody else's. Oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I think that a lot of the folks out there are creators themselves. They may or may not be looking to kind of separate themselves from their influences. Mm -hmm. uh, so anything that comes up when you see an image, anything that you want to talk about. So this will be random. It's going to be like chat roulette. I love uh, it. I love chat roulette. With uh, fewer genitals. Um, oh. Not none, because, <laughs> but fewer, fewer genitals. Okay. Let's get started. No genitals in this one. No genitals, but butts. Butts is a light motif. Yeah. I'm trying to think of where I came up with the idea for this. I really wanted to draw some birch trees because mm -hmm. they're beautiful. <laughs> um, and for me, I have trouble just drawing like a beautiful image and leaving it at that. Um, I worry it's a bit boring. It needs a bit of a story or something. And um, I like the idea of a person just enjoying nature by <laughs> unzipping and dropping. Trow, like he's not even peeing necessarily. He's right. just sort of like enjoying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's gorgeous. That's the thing. That's the, it's such a gorgeous. It's such a gorgeous image, and yet. I don't know why I drew a man in there instead of a woman. But I'm not sure why. Maybe if I drew it again, I'd draw a woman. All right. Uh, okay, so this is how to choose a wine. Uh, this wine is the one makes you uh, ask strangers for piggyback rides. The other one makes your tits itchy. Uh, the other one is good with beef. Uh, the other one is uh, good for fights. Drink the dice, have a good cry. And then tell me about don't. Why don't? Um, I've changed my mind about don't. Um, I mean, champagne. Uh, I think it's good <laughs> in, a, in a mimosa. But, um, I made this comic based on, uh, I drank some wine and then I really wanted a piggyback ride. So I thought <laughs> maybe that was uh, related to the wine I drank. And uh -huh. then certain wine, like I drink one glass and I immediately just want to sob. So I was like, okay, I have a list going there. Why uh, the color? Tell me about the colors that you chose here. Um, I was kind of playing around with doing some monochromatic work at the time and I just thought it would be fun to limit it. Because mm -hmm. usually I'm kind of like, I want to use every color in the box. Right. That's usually my go-to. Uh -huh. um, so it's fun to limit it sometimes. Okay. Here we go. Uh, this actually, I think, uh, this is an earlier version of it. Okay, um, so this is, uh, is this Tuca or is this? Yeah, this is Tuca the Toucan. Mm -hmm. She's kind of like an alter ego of mine. Uh -huh. And um, I made this after I went swimsuit shopping with my friend Emily, who yep. I co-host Baby Geniuses with. And it was kind of a funny experience, swimsuit shopping. It's always like a nightmare. Yeah, the, uh, the image before this, uh, we see one of, I think it's, is it a swimsuit she's trying on or a swimsuit she's taking off that has Kathy uh, Yeah, saying, it just Ack. has Kathy printed on the swimsuit, which I don't know why that doesn't exist. Like, I would love it. It should, right? I would love a Kathy swimsuit. <laughs> that is such a good idea. Uh, yeah, it's good. so you, you enter into this whole thing of swimsuit uh, shopping, and you know that your audience's mind is going to go right to Kathy. Yeah. So you steer into the skid. That's like, you know, I like to reference the history of comics about swimsuit shopping. <laughs> <laughs> a long and storied history. Uh, okay, so this is a best in show sort of thing, a dog <laughs> show, but it's a hot dog show. Uh, this was after I decided to call my book Hot Dog Taste Test, just because I like the way those words sound, but I had nothing related to those words in the book. <laughs> so I thought I should do at least one full color spread that was kind of themed with that. Right, right. And that's what this would look like. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, uh, hot dogs have never looked so good. I'm not a hot dog guy, but they have never looked so wonderful. I like them. Yeah. Uh, watercolors here? Um, and gouache, yeah. And gouache. I like to mix them. Mm -hmm. This is your brother, yes? Yes. Okay, and he shows up in your work. Yeah, in this one I got a little bit more personal than I have in previous comics. I wanted to try a diary comic because mm -hmm. I really like them. Mm -hmm. I like reading them. I think they're really hard to make. Yeah. Um, because, especially for me, I'm sort of like, well, what's, 
I'm so boring and you know, usually have to turn myself into an animal to feel comfortable writing work about myself. Um, but this was, uh, I wrote a travelogue about our uh, trip to Argentina. Right. We visited some relatives, my mom is from there. Um, we'd recently had a death in the family, so I kind of, you know, addressed that. And um, yeah, this was based on a sketch I did of my brother while I was there. Right. And this act, next bit is from uh, that travelogue, basically, where yeah. you talk about uh, his uh, girlfriend passed away. Yeah, home? yeah. She was really close to our family, and they'd been seeing each other a long time. And yeah. yeah. And one of the things that uh, this this comic reveals is that you got back on the horse, as it were, so to yeah. speak, uh, <laughs> after two decades. After a really long time away from writing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sorry. And uh, when you write about horses, when you draw horses, you the love comes through. Uh, it is there. There is a pure, <laughs> uh, unfettered kind of affection there. Yeah, I really. Yeah, if I could just draw anything for the rest of my life, it'd be horses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what it is about them. I really don't. I kind of wish I didn't like them. <laughs> 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 it's like. <laughs> I joked the other day, I like, wished I hadn't told anyone I like them so much. Yeah. Because I feel like now people are like, oh, you're like that girl on um, Bob's Burgers. Yes. I'm like, you're just saying that because you don't understand. Like, <laughs> maybe I am like her. <laughs> but, I mean, it's a, it's a nuanced love, right? I mean, this image here. It's a complex love. It's a complex love. This image here is uh, gorgeous and kind of terrifying. Thank you. Yes. So uh, tell me about it. Um, this came out of, there's a place that I like to go riding in Joshua Tree. These people own some horses and I ride them. And um, recently one of them was saying like, well, you know, the horse is a, is a prey animal and you're a predator and the horse can smell that on you. The fact that you eat meat, the horse can tell. Um, and I was like, whoa, that's really creepy. Mm -hmm. um, so I made this whole comic that's kind of a horror comic about that, and it's fictional. It's um, someone who buys a horse. A lot of people think it's real and that I have a horse now, which I don't. Um, <laughs> someday. Um, <laughs> and uh, she goes riding the horse every day after work, and she hunts, and the horse can smell that she's a meat eater, and the horse is like kind of trying to run away from her while she's riding it. I like that kind of complicated mm -hmm. relationship where it's like, is my riding the horse beneficial to the horse? Does the horse hate it? Like, so th it's a little bit about that. Yeah. Our complex relationship with animals. And speaking of horses. <laughs> and, speaking and, of, and speaking of genitals. Because uh, <laughs> dude's face is, uh, is junk. It is, yeah. 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 You know, kind of unintentionally. I mean, I wasn't trying to go for like a Joe Camel uh, subliminal yep. message thing, but uh, horse's faces just are that shape. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Now, um, I, A, I love the fact that he's got uh, uh, posters of shoes on his wall. Like, that's, that's, yeah, that's a in this thing. universe, it's kind of a symbol, but nobody really knows where it came from. Right, right. Yeah. I also love um, the, the thing that you don't necessarily notice until you see a couple episodes. He's blotchy. He's what? Blotchy. Uh, his, blotchy. Oh, he's yeah. watercolored. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um, it's, it, it, it's not. Everything else is kind of, uh, uh, what's the term, flat colored. Like, everybody is just bright street colors. A lot of the animals have blotch, you know, right. kind of watercolor, and a lot of the people have it in their clothes. And actually, I mean, it's a pain in the ass to do it, because it's like, it's a watercolor texture I make by hand, I scan it in, and then um, we have them, like, in our server, and we're supposed to kind of put them in the characters. But then when they move, like, the texture has to track. I'm just getting into, like, boring animation stuff. No, no, no. This is, this is <laughs> stuff I didn't know until, you know, started to work on it, and I'm like, oh, this is a whole extra step. So what, what do you think the watercolor that, that effect adds? What does it bring? Um, we wanted kind of a hand-drawn look to it. It was supposed to somewhat resemble my personal work, mm -hmm. um, just to make it seem warmer and to kind of differentiate it from other shows. Mm -hmm. It does that, <laughs> uh, as does this. This is, uh, speaking of uh, horses, uh, uh, that, that is a, a very effective Benedict Cumberbatch. Do you think he's ever seen this? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wonder so, about that sometimes. So, so uh, talk to us about writing Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, let's see, what was I thinking when I made this? <laughs> Good Lord. Um, mm, I just, <laughs> I like him. He's in that movie very briefly. I like which that movie. movie? Uh, movie? War Horse. War right. Horse. Right. Uh, War Horse. It's not a great movie, but no. I do cry every time I watch it. Um, and yeah, this other drawing, I do, when I'm running, sometimes I get really bored and I imagine... I'm like riding a horse while I'm running, but mm -hmm. then, yeah, it's like, am I riding myself? Like what's, I, you know, it's best not to think too much about it. 
Now, uh, fashion is also a thing for you. You're, you're interested in fashion. Sort of on the periphery of it. Okay. I'm not, I don't like buy a lot of fashion-y things and right. it's too expensive and I feel like I wish fashion was a little more accessible to mm -hmm. more people. You know, like it's like can be a bit boring. It's like all size two sure. people and um, it's a little bit emperor's new clothesy a uh -huh. lot of the time. It's like, why is this $2,000 or $20,000, you know? Yeah. Um, so I like to I like to poke fun at it. it. It's certainly like fun to look at. Yeah. Well, I mean, what I love about this uh, particular image is uh, that she probably doesn't own that hat, Anna Wintour. You don't think? But it's so on brand. It is so. <laughs> she kind of she has it uh, emotionally. You know, she, she she possesses it. I am fascinated by her. Uh, the one thing that I that I, I wanted to bring up uh, about uh, Wanda is Wanda, the character, uh, the owl, the snow owl. Who? Hmm? I'm sorry. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. Nicely done. <laughs> Perfectly timed and nicely done. Uh, is she a screech owl? Is she a barn owl? Do we know what kind of owl she is? Um, I don't know. Oh, I think she, she's like kind of a new kind of owl I made yeah, up. There you I go. wanted her, her face to be heart shaped because she's supposed to be someone you'd fall in love with immediately, right. as, as Bojack does. Uh, she has been in a coma. She was in a coma for 30 years. So yeah. she uh, went into a coma in the 80s. And if you didn't know that about the character, you would take one look at her. That dress is perfect. I have to call that dress a true collaboration with the creator of the show, Raphael. We mm -hmm. really went back and forth on it a lot. And he really wanted like a Cindy Lauper vibe. Yeah. And he was like, this dress is not based on anything that exists. He's like, I want asymmetrical, multicolored tears. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I can do that. Uh -huh. It was really fun. I, I, it's my favorite part of the job where I get to feel like a dressmaker or something. Right. So, t so talk a little bit about creating costumes. You're creating, because you, when you say designing characters, people think you're talking about, oh, this fish will look like X. But you're actually talking, you're creating this entire world. Yeah. It's weird. Like when I started, I didn't really know a lot about animation. And, and I made some choices that now I have to really stick to, like, because I designed the characters in like 2011. Wow. And the show didn't air until 2014. And yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not saying I regret anything, <laughs> but like, you know. Uh, well, you know, like the, the Filmation folks, uh, when they made those crappy uh, animated things, the reason they made it were so crappy is because they were easy to animate, because you could just have yeah. like, one, just the mouth move. Uh, and when something is as painstakingly wrought as this and as original as this, do you ever, uh, like seriously, do you ever regret anything that was designed so extensively that it's tough to animate? Uh, yeah. There's certain things I've shifted away from, like I gotta say, like putting patterns on the arms and legs mm -hmm. really makes people's lives complicated in mm -hmm. a way that I regret. Like, for like, you know, this person on the crew who was like kind of mad at me for a while, and I was like, why are you mad at me? And she's like, well, you're just designing all these things with patterns everywhere, and it's making our lives difficult. Uh -huh. And I was like, I didn't know. <laughs> you have to tell me. I'm an idiot. Like, um, so yeah, now I, I'm kind of, I have to consider like, oh, every decision I make is going to affect the pipeline. Right. Yeah. Uh, Bojack's sweaters are also like like Wanda's uh, dress, perfect. <laughs> they they connote uh, that time, that sitcom era, so well. Yeah, yeah. That was really like the first thing we nailed. Uh -huh. Like I really knew what he looked like, and he was definitely a guy who wears sweaters in L.A. Yep, yep. There you go. <laughs> uh, food is uh, the subject of this book, sensibly. I mean, it's there's a lot of food and food related things, and you are straddling that line of of gorgeous, cute, and terrifying. <laughs> Um, because often you will look at a spread like this and it'll take your eye a while to kind of soak it all in and then you will see the snake and then you'll be like, oh, hey, what the hell? Um, what, what did, uh, the, there's a whole piece, there's a whole section of the book about the holidays and holiday foods. So is this, you wanted to build to this, right? This was the big... This was something I did for Lucky Peach where I really didn't know what the hell to do and, and so I just made some weird drawings in my sketchbook and then I kind of figured it out later like this is going to be some messed up food diary. Mm -hmm. I really like um, making fun of food diaries because yeah. it's like something everyone does but you know it's just a fun format. Um, and I also, I just really like disasters especially when there's a lot of pretty things laid out. I like when that gets destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, I used to like go to see plays a lot and there's, I like plays where you know, like True West, like things are kind of set up in a certain way, and by the end of the play, all the drawers are pulled out, and right. it's a disaster. I love that. Okay. Um, so I think that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. It's like, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did everyone die at this dinner? Like, what? There's so many dead birds. So yeah. many dead birds. Uh, so, where there is food, there is 
uh, the opposite of food. Doof. Doof. That's my favorite joke in the book. Uh, uh, <laughs> Such a dumb joke. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great joke. Uh, that that uh, poop should be called doof because it is the opposite of food. It's food backwards. It's food backwards, exactly. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, uh, this it's uh, relatable, so relatable. But what yeah. uh, what is the what is the draw here? Um, I just wanted to make some comics about going to the bathroom. It's something I think about a lot. Uh, <laughs> I think it's fun to address it. Um, and yeah, here are some of my gripes with, yeah, bathrooms. Here's mm -hmm. some things that could go wrong. Uh, you also, speaking of food, you design uh, several uh, concepts. My favorite is fuck flavor. I love that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> love that one. I hate Subway. Oh. <laughs> food options. The commercials are so depressing. They are. I also don't like having to tell people what to make me. Like I just, yeah. just, I, I just want to be it served. It doesn't taste good. I don't like. No, that bread is a tube of food. You're absolutely yeah. right. That bread. Uh, there's several of these in the book. Uh, Toyota. You have to own a fucking car. I think like that. Yeah, you need a that. fucking car. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> that's like why anyone buys a Prius. Uh, so again, um, pooping, food, restaurants. It's all in there. Uh, this idea of going back to the uh, to poop in the same place where you, you ate the food that created the poop in the first place uh, is a great idea. I love the look on the dude's face. Yeah. <laughs> He's considering it. Yeah. But <laughs> he wants to say no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and again, this just gorgeous, another uh, layout like this, um, which has a sort of a celebratory uh, and, and panicky quality. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this was made after I went to my boyfriend's parents' house for Thanksgiving, and um, instead of helping with anything, I just sat and I sat with a book of their, um, they have like a bird watching book, and I just drew all the birds in the bird watching book, and then I drew all the objects in their house. Mm -hmm. So like the like mandolin type thing, and the gourds, and um, the box full of ingredients that I wasn't helping with. <laughs> I made this. <laughs> Uh, and uh, a lot of lists. Uh, you know, when we talk about uh, your cartooning, we, uh, we talk about the art, but uh, the writing in this book is so good. There's a oh, pa passage you. where you talk about uh, how you are drawn to what you call, uh, to, to animals who do not behave. You call them nature's dickheads. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. It's great. So again, uh, I love bowel starter as an alternate name for breakfast. Yeah, I just got to get it revved just up. Gotta, gotta, and there's some food photography in this book. Some terrifying food photography. This one, this is my favorite page in the book. Um, <laughs> I went out to fancy dinner with my parents, and then we ordered dessert, and this arrived, and we all started laughing so hard that the waitress was like, are you OK? Are you? And she just backed away from me. We were like, this is just four different kinds of poop. <laughs> I mean, two of them look like they came out of a cloaca, but... Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. I don't even know what this was. <laughs> uh, there's a whole section in there about Argentinian foods. I want to get to this photo there about dogs. You love dogs. I do. Yeah, you have a dog yourself? I have a dog. What kind of dog? Um, she's a mix. Uh, someone on Twitter who has an identical mutt recently got DNA tested, and theirs was a coon hound. Hmm, okay. So I'm going with that now. That's exciting. <laughs> Uh, so yes, yeah, so it's a mixture of dogs made out of rubber bands, and dogs and, and hot dogs, mm -hmm. and uh, this is this this comes back to it. Uh, more fashion. Uh, fashion is a big thing, <laughs> especially <laughs> the YSL designer hat, which turns out to be yarn, uh, leaves, and scissors. Oh yeah, I really like the idea of like an animal making its own hat <laughs> out of things it's found lying around. Uh, very uh, photorealistic animals here, uh, as opposed to something like Bojack, which is uh, just taking, pushing the boundaries of cartooning. Uh, but when you draw uh, a toucan like that, uh, you can also make her, like Tuca is more, in more the cartoon. cartoon. Yeah, more cartoon. simplified. Yep. This comes from oh, yeah. the sexy book of sexy sex. This is like my first illustration job. Yeah, it is. Uh, this is uh, uh, Kristen Shaw and what? Who's uh, the, Rich Blomquist. And Rich Blomquist husband. did this book a few years back called the sexy book of sexy sex, which you and somebody else did. Michael Kupperman. Michael Kupperman. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and it's a lot of fun. I'm sorry about the quality of this, but oh, the, it's fine. Talk I, about. I hadn't the, seen this in a while. Um, 
yeah, the art director found me on a blog and, and then he thought like, okay, well she'll draw this crazy thing we need. We, we needed, they needed like a pornographic version of Where's Waldo? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I drew the most disgusting thing. It's like just people fucking all over and there's like a spread open, you know, genitals. Mm -hmm. And he was like, whoa, can we even print this? This is like <laughs> even more than we asked, but uh, yeah. Uh, they look so happy. <laughs> they really do, they seem contented. Oh, so do they, aww. Is this, this is like DC and Marvel crossing, right? Yes, yeah. yes it is, okay. yeah. I don't know anything about superhero comics, so. Yeah, that, that is, I mean. I feel like I'm trolling with this one. No, but I think, I think uh, you have matched them well. I think, uh, I, I think the only people who could stand up to their lovemaking are each other, so good, <laughs> good. I think that's good. Uh, tell me about these guys. Oh, this was these for a uh, Back to the Future themed pop art show, so mm. I just made this. It's fantastic. Thank so, you. Uh, uh, tell me about uh, the, the uh, sexy sort of um, corseted, tighted um, guinea, uh, what is that, a, a lizard? What? Uh, uh, yeah, it's like a, a, it's a monster. It's a lizard, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking when I drew this. It was just fun. <laughs> there is a story here. I mean, is it? We're looking at the '80s, right? We're looking at yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's something is. I do like drawing lizard people because lizards are not usually that appealing. Mm -hmm. I guess, like mm -hmm. in a traditional way, not cute and fuzzy. So they're fun to draw. I did find this thing on Tumblr where these scalies, who are like furries but they like scaly things, they took no. this image and put it on Tumblr, and then they were role playing as the lizards. Really? Yeah. Oh, you've. You've that was one of the best things I've ever seen. You've enriched, you've enriched the world in a way. Yes, <laughs> that didn't exist before this, and now it does. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this was something I sketched during a panel once. Actually. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was bored, so I. Drew. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an excerpt from a food diary that you did, basically, where you go, you basically shadowed Wiley Dufresne. Yeah. From WD50 in New York City, uh, which is a what do they call it? That's a molecular, kind of molecular gastronomy. gastronomy right. Yeah. Uh, and this is just so fun. The, oh, thank this, you. This uh, entire piece, because uh, while it comes off like a really, like a good dude, he comes off like a really good guy. He's okay. Uh -huh. no, he, no, he's really nice. <laughs> he's intimidating. Yeah, one would imagine. But uh, so what? What do you take away from that experience? I mean, do you want to go back to? Do you, do? You yeah, want, it was one of the best meals I've ever had. Yeah. Um, I mean, they they served me a different drink with every single course, so mm -hmm. that helped. Yeah. Like I was sure. pretty excited about that, and um, his food was really playful and very um, intellectual mm -hmm. in a fun way. But the food actually tasted good, which is important. Yeah, but he's, he's just someone who like thinks about it a lot. So I kind of related to him on that level. But he served you like this snack of just really basic food, food, right? As you guys were waiting around. Yeah, he just made eggs with like American cheese mm -hmm. on like a English muffin, and mm -hmm. it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this is uh, th there's a, a passage here where you talk about the eating the food. Where again, the writing is really really good because the thing is, when people write about food, they have to be able to tell us what it's like. I know it's really hard. It's, it's hard really to hard. draw food, and it's hard. To to write about it in a way that conveys, you know, you just can't it's, at some point. It's right. like you're not going to be able to taste this yeah, yeah, through yeah, the page. Yeah. So I'll uh, do my best. That's right. It's also why a lot of uh, cooking shows on TV are all dependent on the judges. The judges are important because if they cannot tell you what's going on, you're just, you're there in the dark. Do you watch Great British Bake Off? Oh, I certainly do. It's my favorite show. Well, of course. It's everybody's favorite I show. love it so much. It's awesome. <laughs> and, you know, it's, uh, there's a, it's, it's going through a rough patch right now. But. Oh, you think? Uh, yeah, um, uh, we'll, we'll talk about this, uh, but uh, <laughs> don't tell her. Um, the, no, uh, the, the, two, uh, the two hosts. Oh, yeah. yeah, they might not be on it anymore, it which is like just such are. a bad... I love that like, the two, those two hosts are just like two really funny, goofy women, mm -hmm. and they get to be... Like, I feel like I don't see that a lot on... Yeah, I mean, when I first saw it, I was like, why are there two? What, why do there need to be two hosts? Because uh, you need one to be kind of school marmy and strict, and the other one need to be kind of like looser. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Uh, Back, back to pooping. Um, uh, uh, again, a recurring light motif. Uh, there is another image. Oh, this kind of is, we're kind of screwing up the order here, but let me go back. There is an image here um, in the book about uh, sitting on a toilet seat and what it can happen to your butt. Oh, yeah. That I did not reproduce here because it's a very charming image. It's a very cute image. It's also freaky. And oh. I, I cannot unsee it. We would uh, have had to have a, like a trigger alert. I, it's, we totally it. wouldn't it have. It is a little upsetting. It um, is a little upsetting. Yeah, I guess I like to joke about 
how people get a little skeeved out by sitting on a toilet seat mm -hmm. that's public. Mm -hmm. No, probably nothing bad could really happen. That's true. All right, more. Uh, this is it. You need a fucking car, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Why else would you get a Chevrolet truck? It's like. It's awesome. Uh, this is from a section called planting, 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 yeah. planting uh, which is about these uh, two, two cans, right? Uh, um, no, they're, they're like, what are they? Yeah. Thrushes. It's like a song Thank thrush. You. Thank you. <laughs> uh, two song thrushes who decide that they're going to uh, get a lot of plants, and so they do. This is my favorite passage in the book because it says, this, this they describe when they buy this new house as a uh, vaulted scream space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'd gone to like a few open houses with my partner. Um, we can't buy a house, but it's fun to go to the open houses mm -hmm. and see all the other weird people there. And I just, yeah, I like that process of how they describe the house and then you go look at it and it's like, there's all these different amenities and it's, but it's just like a box right. that you put your shit in. <laughs> it's like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Oops. Uh, now, tell me about this. You're, you're doing a little something with uh, oh, ceramics. ceramics. Yeah. yeah, I'd been working on BoJack for a while, and I was really tired of like drawing on the Cintiq, and you know, I needed a break, so I started taking ceramics classes around the corner, and uh, just to kind of switch up how I was being creative. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it was really fun. Uh, one of the things that this is the beginning of the travel trip to Argentina. Go yeah. down to the fourth uh, panel there, where we see that you have gendered the plane. Yeah. Yeah. Do you always do that? Do you always think of machines as? I just think it's funny to take something so cold and like perfectly designed and just slap some boobs on it. I just, <laughs> it's, it's making it a little friendlier too. Yes. I actually like I made a pin of of that, and I thought maybe people could wear it if they were afraid of flying, oh, that's and nice. it would make them feel better. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and there's also, um, there's another image in the book of just a bunch of birds uh, look in like a field of reeds or something like that, and then the, as you look, you notice that they all Have got their junk out. And, yep. Yeah. Uh, I have you, a very immature sense of humor. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, money, friends, ideas, wardrobe. See, look at the cutout sleeves there. That tells me that you can <laughs> know a little something about Just a little something fashion. extra. Yeah. Yeah, this is... I think I'd have a conversation with my friend Raphael about how, yeah, you can do, you know, so well in your lifetime, but yeah, you can't take things with you. Mm -hmm. When you die, yep. you'll die and it doesn't matter. What I love about it is that the money uh, symbol here is a couple bags with dollar signs, classic. That's how I store my money. Right. <laughs> but the art, instead of doing a little easel with a, you know, what other people would do, like a palette of paint, it's, uh, <laughs> it's boobs and penises. Yeah, that's my art that yeah, it's, I have. It's butts and penises, yes. Right. And I think that's it. Oh. Okay, so now we're going to throw it open to questions. Uh, questions again begin with uh, uh, who, what, where, when, why. They do not begin with I, unless, unless you feel compelled. But uh, go, anybody have any questions at all? Just head up to the mic. Hello. Um, I have a question. Um, how do you um, balance um, working on the show and then doing your own like com personal comics work? That's a good question. Um, it's hard to. Uh, the question was, how do I balance working on the show with doing my personal work? And uh, it's really difficult. <laughs> I'm still actually trying to figure that out. Um, not only that, but like also how to balance my personal life and my hobbies and just relaxing, which is difficult. Um, I feel like last. Fall, I was finishing my book and working on BoJack full time, and I just wasn't relaxing at all. Um, and I was like, you know, I'll just wait until I'm done with everything and I have a break, and then I'll relax. Um, and I was like, okay, okay, I'll just keep pushing it. And then uh, when I went on vacation, I just like had a whole bunch of panic attacks because my body was like, okay, now, now you can relax, <laughs> now you can like fucking freak out. <laughs> um, so I don't recommend that. Um, I'm trying to be okay now with working slower. I feel like when I was like 27, you know, I could work a lot more and just sit at a desk all day, and now I just literally can't um, because I'll just feel bad. Um, physically, it's difficult. That sounds sad, but I think it's I think it's a good thing, like to be forced to balance a little more. And like sometimes I'm like, okay, I just need to go to the park and lie down and like draw in my sketchbook or read or, yeah. 
What's a, what's, a, what's a day at BoJack like? What When you go in, do you go to the writer's room? Do you hang out in the writer's room? What do you I'm, do? My office is right next to the writer's room, mm-hmm. so I get to like eavesdrop a mm-hmm. little bit. Um, it depends day to day. You know, it's um, like right now they're working on writing and I'm designing like the main characters for season four, like the upcoming season. Um, and then after a while, all the designers will come in and mm-hmm. then I'll have to art direct them. So they just, all day long, they send me drawings and I'm like, this coat has three buttons, not two, that kind of thing. Um, hmm. And then the background designers come in and I'm like adding details to the background and um, kind of working with the directors and storyboarders. And then um, uh, and then animation goes to Korea and it comes back and right. we fix it. And then I make notes like this sitting position looks weird or Diane's neck is like three feet long here. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, that's basically the process. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely love your work, and you. I was wondering what it was like working with Tegan and Sarah. Oh my god, they're so nice. I actually haven't met them. Um, I've only talked to Sarah uh, through like DMs and, and email, but she they were great because um, they asked me to do a music video for them, and I said, you know, this is the first idea that jumps to mind when I listen to this song, and they were like, great. And I made an animatic and sent it to them, and they said, great. And then I hired animators and made it, and they're like, awesome. Um, it's like, I, I'm spoiled forever now. They're like a dream client. <laughs> Definitely the coolest people I've ever done anything for. Um, I was going to ask about, oh. I, uh, made, I made it sound really easy to make that music video. And it was <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> I cried a lot. <laughs> the, uh, I've never done that before. The episode of BoJack this season, the underwater episode, the largely silent episode, uh, is oh, yeah. probably one of the most talked about episodes of television this year, just in terms of buzz, just in terms of people talking about it. I'm um, so glad because it was really difficult. It, I can imagine it was difficult. And it was difficult to convince people to let us do it. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's a show that is very joke dense, and you remove dialogue from it, and yet you re- you supplant that, you re- replace that with uh, the design. You guys have seen the episode, right? Many of you. Uh, the it's baby- the last season. There's like an underwater episode. Right. The baby. I'm not spoiling anything. The, the baby seahorse, uh, which is basically engineered for cuteness. It's yes. like it's like it's, it is, it, you have had a secret underground staging area somewhere where you genetically engineered this incredibly cute yeah. uh, giant eyes, very uh, face. So talk a little bit about. Um, that episode is really special. Uh, the director of it, Mike Collingsworth, he's a friend of mine, and he's actually the supervising director for the whole show. He mm-hmm. basically oversees animation. Um, but he directed that episode himself personally, and he had just had his first child when that episode was being worked on. So mm-hmm. it was like, I felt like he had a very personal connection to it. Mm-hmm. And he's a big fan of like Chuck Jones and a lot of old timey kind of animation. So he put a lot of that kind of stuff in there, yeah. in the gags. Um, and I just like went nuts drawing sea creatures. Yeah. And there's like a painting with Moby Dick fighting Ahab in the background mm-hmm. that I really like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was a really difficult episode to make. I can imagine. We don't, we, I feel like, yeah, we have a very limited schedule on BoJack. Yeah. Probably for the best, because if we had more time, we'd cram even more jokes in there, and it would just be too dense. But like, yeah, it can be challenging. Uh, so it's, it's, your, your schedule is Monday to Friday. Do you ever work on weekends? Do you have to kind of go in? Uh, yeah, we work on weekends a lot okay. of time. All the time. OK. Yes, sir. Hi. i uh, big fan of your work. And Thank I'm you. curious if uh, you have, is there like a long-term dream project that you want to work on that you haven't gotten around to, or you've been beavering away at, or anything like that? or? Just curious. For a while, I really wanted to do a music video, and then I just got to do it. Um, I'd like to do more. I'd like to do more uh, kind of personal animated projects. They do take a lot of time and money, but um, they're just really fun. Um, so I'd like, yeah, I'd like to do more myself and uh, maybe do like a graphic novel, just like one long continuous story. Um, yeah, I, tr- I try not to plan too much for my future because I never really know what's going to happen. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, talk about uh, the schedule of the podcast. I mean, you're doing all of this stuff. You're working weekends. When do you fit the podcast in? Um, we record once a month, and we try to get two episodes done. And we only do it every other week. Uh-huh. That's when it comes out. So right. that kind of allows us both to have time to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be tricky yeah. to find time. Well, yeah, but I mean, uh, I, I, I do a podcast, too. And the, the most important thing to us is uh, not quality. Who cares about quality? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It comes out regularly. That's a huge yeah, important. Yeah, I wish we could. I wish we could have it come out every week, but right. it just became too stressful for us. Like Emily's very busy too. Oh no, yeah. Um, it's weird. Like I guess I do do a lot, but I feel like I don't. I feel like the laziest 
person. <laughs> There's a lot of days where I try to draw and I can't, mm -hmm. and I just don't do anything that entire day. Mm -hmm. um, when did you know you drew something and you knew that this is mine? This is not something that I'm, I'm trying on other people's voices. This is me. I never knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I never had that feeling. Mm -hmm. I think it just, um, you know, and you strive for that feeling, but I feel like it's best to ignore that and right. just keep making work about and focusing on the content. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the advice I usually give people is like, don't worry about style and like having your own style. You can't really push that. Right. You can't um, expedite that process. Um, all you can worry about is making work that you care about and about stories that only you could tell and, you know, focusing on the content and then the style will kind of come later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Any, any other questions at all? All right. Well, I want to thank you all for coming and I want to thank Lisa Hanawalt for being so awesome. Thank you so much.